Sawyer's got a new guy here. I think oh. I think that's him right here. What? Don't film this. Don't film this? <laughs> Why? It looks like we should be. <laughs> I'm here, Lou. Am I running you over? How am I looking? Looks good to me. Yeah. See, we should have filmed it. He Just don't. Filming it after half the block. <laughs> here, put. Let's get some commentary, Come man. Come on, man. I don't want any commentary. <laughs> How about my front? Oh, we're, we're hoping you rip it off oh, for the great. camera. Yeah. Are you gonna pay for it and write it off for me? Yeah, sure. You're close. Go slow. You're good. Look, look at that. That's how it's done, folks. And it's, it's Tanner's new guy. Is this new guy? Yep. What's your name? Lewis. What is it? Louis. 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 What do you prefer? Whatever. Okay, Louis. It Louis. Changes for each person. That's my son Caleb. I'm Paul. What's going on? You don't mind. You don't mind being on film, do I you, Louie? I told Louis? him to flick you off if he don't want to be on film. <clears throat> Danner didn't make you write like a, a clause about maybe being on camera or anything like that. <laughs> yeah. Good luck. When I get some, I'll let you know. <laughs> so uh, yeah, we're here to film like three cars today. All of them, I believe, kind of old school, but. You know, Danner, that's what he does now. He, he gets these cars that he doesn't want to work on and then makes me work on them. <laughs> so one of them is this old Mustang right here. Is that what we're starting I with? think we're starting on the Mustang. I was just complaining about him, <laughs> give, him giving me his old school <laughs> work that he doesn't want to do anymore. It's Christmas, man. You know, people <laughs> want their cars back. It's a Mustang GT. He bought it 100 miles ago and he drove it once. Look, the people will love the Mustang GT. For whatever reason, our last video on the Accord with the bad plug, everybody loves it. Yeah. I, I, I'm thinking, that's, that was a throwaway <laughs> video. Like, I, I, why? I don't understand. I, whatever. What is going on here? I stopped him from working someone's, to help me get off. Someone's cleaning in the oh, shop? Well, yeah. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> yeah. You want to tell us real quick, Dan, or what, what you found on this? So, so give, far, not a whole lot. Well, you um, said that it was losing spark. I'm losing coil control that it looks like to me. I mean, I can still see it like little spikes, yeah. but it's not, it's, it's falling, like it'll be running and it'll just start misfiring and then it'll shut off. It always restarts. But when I look at the coil control, it looked like I was losing it during that time that it's doing that. And, and you said it has a new distributor, new module, new coil that the I customer the put coil, in before he brought the it. Coils new. It, it was looks, a, the coil's new, yeah. It was at another shop, okay. and I think they they put the distributor in, okay. and then they weren't sure where to go with it, and the guy lost confidence with them, and I, I don't, I, okay. I'm not ready. I wouldn't point fingers at all, because, yeah. I mean, I'm like, for sure. Uh, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. You know, so. What year is this one? 85 or six. So here, 85. 86. So zero reason for me to plug a scan tool into this thing. Yeah, in fact, there's, there's no, there's I, well, no it's code. an E4 system, so yeah. we're gonna have. But I don't, they don't store codes unless they the lights on. Do mm. Fords? I don't think unless the lights on. I don't. I think, don't remember, but if I can make it misfire, I don't need to read the faults on the system. In fact, I, you have the old adapters that I can. I have. Them. I can use if yeah. I need to. Yeah. We may look at that, but let's. We'll. If you can make it miss, I mean, like maybe if you want to look at RPM and see if you're dropping RPM signal, maybe that would work for you. But I'm I, gonna go. You mentioned coil control. Rather than looking at voltage, I'm gonna look at current flow first because okay. I think it's easier to look at. As long as you don't keep the amp probe next to the coil because of magnetic fields, but I'm gonna look at coil control using the amp clamp to start. We'll see what it looks like. Because you said you saw primary dropping out. Yes. Yes. Pipe scope. Uh, we're looking at coil control here, so I'm gonna go my low amps 20. As far as current flow goes through the ignition coil, uh, we can use either of the wires. Uh, I'm going after the feed wire. Uh, current flow doesn't change, so either of the two. If I was going on this side, I'd go around both wires. One goes to the tack, the other would go to the module. If I go around both, I'll see the coil current I want to see. Oh, dude. Oh, 
Those are weird looking. Absolutely, we're dropping coil control. So you see the gaps in the waveform? So let me pause that, we'll shut it off. And we'll look at that picture. So I, I don't need I don't need scan data, I don't need trouble codes, I don't need anything. That one first simple test with what Danner provided me. This is absolutely dropping coil control. You see the gaps in this. Each one of these ramps, let me zoom in on one first. Each one of these ramps would be a coil firing event. Same coil fires each time on off, right? As the, as the ramp climbs, we're turning it on. As it drops, we're turning it off. That's where spark occurs. So you, the tack jumping around, all of the surging that you're hearing is these gaps in here. You see the gaps in, in your coil control? Um, that is a problem. So when you see something like that, we're on the primary side. Primary side is that distributor. So in the distributor, we have a pickup that feeds into the ignition module. They call that the uh, PIP signal, feeds into this module, and then this module sends its signal out to the ECM. So uh, knowing these systems very well, it's the top wire is my PIP signal. That's the one I wanna look at now and compare it to my coil firing events. I'm hoping, I'm hoping that this is an easy one because it right now it looks to be, it should be relatively easy. But given the distributor's new, you know, kind of makes you concerned a little bit about being cautious about what your call is. All right, channel two, we'll go. I know my colors aren't coordinated here properly, but that's okay. Piggyback our grounds on the outside. This will go to battery ground. And then pin one, unfreeze that, turn on channel two, that works. That's annoying. Just as Danner said, he was pretty sure that we were not losing the PIP signal. I'll zoom out and take a look. Weird. Hey Danner, what you said, it's just easier to see. When you look at primary current, it's easier to see than it is the primary voltage. So um, let's just uh, ignore the green trace for a second. There, clearly coil control dropping out, exactly what you saw. Um, so then, you know, that's directly controlled by the PIP. And you said it's no better with the spout unplugged, so computer out of the I, picture. Could, I didn't try it since that okay. module was in. But what you look for for failing, what you'll see, there's some weird ripple in here that I don't like, and that might be a problem too. I'll have to figure out what's going like on. flat spots? No, the... like see the PIP signal, how you got these like kind of weird ripples in there? Yeah. Like those should The high point shouldn't be there. That ripple right there shouldn't be there. And the clipping mechanism shouldn't be curved. It should be square. It should be even. And so that, that might like be an issue. Like like that one. Yes, exactly. It should look like that. It shouldn't look like these guys. Gotcha. Um, it, but what you look for on these for a failing pickup would be the gaps in here will change. Okay. These guys will be like real pointy, like this yeah. This is more of an RPM change here than it yeah. is anything. But you'll see them, they'll be like real skinny needle points and then normal and that's when the pickups fail. So initial view, like that doesn't, this would be during when it's firing mm -hmm. and then the period of time, say, when it's not, you kind of look in that area to see if you see any weird, you know, anomalies in there. And I'm not seeing any difference from the coil firing to the areas of the PIP when the what coil's the not firing. What about the one that doesn't have a drop at all? Um, that's like... your sync notch for oh, okay. the injection sequencing. Okay. So that's number one cylinder. Gotcha. And then those clippings, you want these clippings to all be even. Mm -hmm. um, but what I don't like, is that oscillation. Don't know if that's a factor yet, just seeing face value, yeah. that coil shouldn't be dropping out. Your suspicions of maybe the, the tachometer being a factor and 
doing something with that coil. Uh, That's the only other thing oh. I see in the circuit, man. You know, and there. But it you, shouldn't interrupt. It shouldn't interrupt coil current. Like if it was sorting, it would be sorting and drawing current all the time when it shouldn't be. It can't sort in a way because there's no control there. It's just a signal. So I would see a higher. We would current see a high amperage current if, if in the tack was if shorted. the tack was sorted. That's why current flows better in this scenario. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. So if the cool, yeah, because what we're talking about, guys, is the two wires that go here. One is the control wire to the module. The other is the control or signal to the tack. And, and Danner was worried about the tack maybe being a factor. And I think no, based, based on current. On the current flow, that would make sense. Yeah, because if you saw high spikes there when it was shutting yeah, down. You would see a, an amperage line that would be constant. Constant up yeah. high. So, yeah, you changed the module. I did. And I like that you changed the I, module. This looks like I, module but I didn't see, well see, I didn't, when I first checked it, I didn't know about the pump you were talking about, but yes. I knew that I wasn't losing anything and it all looked the same. Yes, but I don't like, even on the, on the zoomed in, like if you look at the, the zoomed in coil control, you can see those same oscillations. Like, look at that weird looking, like, partial ramp yeah, you, you know yeah. but you see the oscillation in the current flow and that's telling me like man, this might have an alternator problem like just a quick test like i'm going to unplug the alternator and see how it runs with the alternator unplugged Fine. and i only say that because it the spark timing is solely based on that clipping mechanism right there okay and and any weird like curvature i think could really alter alter that signal I don't know. I'm not totally sure, but if you line these so up, the amp here, wait, like the current, so the coil or the watch the module this. is even based on your like bypass, your spout. The module's still doing all the control. It is. It's just doing what the computer's telling it to do. So, in other words, let me. So, let if me, you were to unplug on. that, you're eliminating any computer control, and it should. Correct. I got gotcha. you. Correct. Thank Can you, you see though, like the corresponding? This one isn't quite there, but you see the clipping is right where we turn the coil on. Yeah. And you're kind of seeing that. You see it maybe real close there. That that timing of that, like it almost, it almost tried to it turned that coil on at the beginning of that oscillation instead of. It shouldn't be turning it on there. Although that's the sink one. I don't know. That's why I called in the expert. Dude, but that's so weird. I've never seen that on this system. Let's throw the alternator pattern in here. Instead of unplugging it, let's get one more channel and look at the alternator. Well, you said, oh, I'll do the spout. I'll do the spout first. So another check on these. I can refer you to some other case studies that I've done, but uh, as far as pickups go, when they fail on these, um, you can unplug the spout, which is the computer's control spark output um, of the ECM, and we can eliminate that from the distributor. And if the car runs better, then you have, you're on the right track, that you have a PIP signal error. And that's what I was describing to my brother, is the error in the PIP signal in those spikes or the clippings of them. But this is our spout connector. All it is is a jumper that jumps those two pins. With that unplugged, the computer does not have control anymore of this distributor. It's pretty much self-contained with this unplugged. So we'll do the same test. We will not see the clipping mechanisms anymore on this waveform. Sounds the same, looks the same. Major oscillations in the signal. This is with the spout unplugged. Yeah, it's so cool looking. I've never seen anything like this. I, I really think these oscillations are causing it in some way. So strange. See the proper way to use grounds on your snap-on unit. That's what the extra lead is for your yellow yellow test leads is to so you can piggyback all your grounds all right this one's just going to be a battery voltage measurement and that battery charger i know we have a cable on here but it's not it's not charging right now right that's not even that's not a factor so this test is ideally done at the alternator but i want to check it at the battery first and uh we can plug our spout back in 
change this to 20 volt. It's it's there. See the ripple in the blue trace. This right here is a lesson on scope usage and using AC coupling. So if I drop my, I really, here's the point. I wanna look at this blue trace in a more zoomed in view. And this isn't like the Pico, I don't have that zoom in capability. I see the oscillation, the ripple in the blue trace, which is my battery voltage. To zoom in on that, I need to lower my voltage scales. But if I lower my voltage scales, it's off the screen, right? It's above 10 volts. But I wanna look at this, say, on a two volt scale, it's way off the screen. But if I AC couple it, which is that button right there, now what I've done is I've taken and blocked all the constant voltage and I'm only showing the oscillation. And now this is a really good picture. I'll freeze this and then I'll zoom out and we will see if these oscillations are coming from the alternator in this picture. So let me see if I can get some good comparison here with this. Uh, it'd be nice to have a little bit more zoomed in view than what I just took. So I'm gonna retake this capture. I like that better, zoom out. Remember when you zoom on the snap-on scopes, you're zooming out, not in. And can we correlate these? This is just at the battery too, by the way. This is a lot of ripple at the battery and we can absolutely cor correlate these. So can you see that uh, when the green trace behind the blue trace has a little ripple, notice it's aligned with the blue, which is my battery voltage. Mm -hmm. Can you, you can see it again on the yellow trace right there, right? It's aligned. It's like all these ripples, this is, this is an alternator issue that's causing the ripple. Now, is that causing my issues? I'm not totally sure yet, but let's do the same test, same scales, two volt, um, and just kind of burn that picture in your mind right there. Let me give you a good one to go with as far as before and after, Caleb. Uh, that might be, we could use that. Let me separate these. I'll pull the, pull the blue trace down. So there's a before picture, right? And all I'm gonna do is move that to the back of the alternator. So what I just said to Caleb um, is scratch that test. I'm not gonna do it at the alternator because I'd have to back probe those guys. Those are my heavy cables. Um, and I just don't feel the need to. I'm just simply going to unplug the alternator control and see what it looks like. The only point I was gonna make at the alternator is whatever you see ripple wise at the battery will be even higher at the alternator. So it, it will be much worse than that. Uh, so I'm not looking for comparison. This is just one, is my ripple gone or not? And uh, yeah, so let's just start it. Problem is still there, I think. My ripple's gone, as you can see. But am I still losing coil control is a question, and I think we are. I think we are. We are. Look at that. It's nice and smooth with, with the alternator out of the picture. Why are we still losing coil control? So we have a couple issues, uh, but this is a much better picture of what it should look like. Ignore the blue trace for now. That's, you see our ripple is gone. And you see how much cleaner the green and the yellow channels are. And now we can see the clipping mechanisms much better. Let's, let's look at that close, more closely now and see if I missed something in my assessment. Yeah, there's a problem here. 
this this still looks like a, a distributor problem and I, I need to I need to brainstorm with Danner. You on the phone, Danner? Nope. When you get a minute, I need to pick your brain for a second. That's why you're here. <laughs> so this definitely has an alternator ripple issue, but that's not our our cause of this. Okay. But now I can see how much cleaner the signal <laughs> oh, looks yeah, that, that's with the, the alternator one. out of the picture. So it's got a diode issue in that yeah. alternator, but that's not what's well, killing the three, Yeah, so you can see I'm still yeah. getting gaps here. It, do you see how you see how nice and square those are when the coil's not firing? And do you see how they're kind of like downward curvatures in yeah, those? Uh -huh. I, I just, every time I've seen this, this is a pickup problem. And you can't like, test that because that... Well, it's inside. You can't. You yeah, can't directly it, test yeah, it. Yeah, because it... Here, here's the... That's why I bought the $40 module. I'm like, I, how am I going to test this? Because you got to loosen the distributor, turn it, or pull it out just to even get to the bolt, and then this snaps yeah. up in there. Yeah. And, and so it, we're clear on this. It's a regular hull effect that's inside, but you can't get to these signals yeah, yeah. and even if you try the distributors turn in there yeah. you wrap your leads around yeah, the distributor you're, you're not gonna i mean i could call him and say where did you have this done can you warranty me the distributor i'm not you ready know? yet I, this could maybe the other variable here is this like it's clean there because the coil's not firing so we may maybe we have a grounding issue with this distributor like i need to look close like you change the module the grounds on the housing I really want to check the, the module ground or the distributor ground before I say I want another pickup. But these look even in uniform. Like, I, I think maybe I'm reaching on what I just said. Like, I know. I mean, they're, the, they're clean. Like, they're, they're even. It see, fire, the, they're see, the, nice. yeah. see the clips? But these All ones the clips. are ramping down on yeah, both but maybe, fronts. But that's a factor of current flow. So when you have current flow rising, then it's not unusual to have a little bit of a voltage drop. So yeah. it's not like that little drop is probably just corresponding with the current rise. And the reason those are clean there is there's just no current flow and that's not a problem. Yeah. And so in other words, like I'm, I'm you know, full of crap here and I, I'm, I don't know what I'm talking about. Well, no, you're putting it out there for other people that are gonna be looking well, at they, it and like, why am I seeing no, that? No, true, thing? but I mean, you know, we're not losing the PIP signal. These are even in I uniform. Know, I know. When you need a pickup in the distributor, you'll see again these will not be evenly spaced Do you mean spaced in between each the, other the clip or, the uh, clip the top part i mean they're are, are, they look pretty they freaking look even close enough yeah. i mean if you're yeah i mean if it's that sensitive it is you know it is and the computer you know i unplug the spout it's still there the computer's not causing this because the module transistors in the module and when you unplug the spout, the computer has zero control of the okay, ignition so it's system. All distributor yep. and pickup. This yeah. thing could run on its own without the computer. Just no advance. Or well, anything. you wouldn't have injection pulse either, so it wouldn't run without the computer. But you would still have spark without yeah, a computer gotcha. on this. I don't know. That's what I was seeing, and that's why I was like, that coil know, should be firing. It should be. What if it's just the coil? I mean, you wouldn't see that on the control side, though, right? Like you should still see even. Well, even. I, I mean, I'm, I'm not seeing current flow, so you're gonna, if I looked at control voltage, I'm gonna see a flat line 12 volts in this area. Maybe I should, I should look at coil voltage during that event to see if, if it's zero volts, then we have an open in the coil. If it's 12, then, it, then I'm not worried about the coil. Okay, I can't remember what I saw. So it's ground side switched. When yeah. it's not firing, did it go low voltage or high voltage? I mean, uh, I probably uh, have a picture of it. No, it's okay. I'm just going to check it. I'll just check it. Okay, so blue trace. I know it's green here, but it's blue on my scope. I'm going to look at coil negative, which is just to verify if the coil itself is giving us a problem. And unfreeze that. We'll take the AC coupling off. Very important. We're gonna have spikes on this. The snap-on scanner, don't need an attenuator or anything like that. Let's see what this looks like. All right, let me peek detect that. Pause, freeze. So if the coil was like intermittently opening, we would see a zero line in there. 
the fact that it's 12, it's ground side switched, means we're not losing continuity through yeah, the coil. So it's sitting there back at the module ready to be fired and it's not pulling it down. It's not the chance. I need to do it. that same check at the module to make sure we don't have like a, a wiring issue in between the two. Yeah, because there's someone did some stuff here. There's uh -oh. a bi there's a uh -oh. there's a fuse link that's popped. Uh oh. I don't know what it's for. Okay. You know, but there's back down here. There's a fusible link. And that's is that for the distrib distributor? I don't think one? so. Okay. Because someone ran a wire. He was telling me someone ran a wire here from somewhere. I don't know what that's for, mm. but there's a fuse link. I think he said it had something to do with lighting though. Okay. Right, but yeah, come. there's definitely some so, wire issues on the car, but it's it's I'm drawing a blank, dude. I I don't know. I've never seen I've never seen an Eek 4 distributor do this. So this is a uh, uh this was nice for our community. <laughs> Not for me at the moment. All right. No wiring diagram. Green yellow. Over here. Same wire, green yellow. This is my coil negative control wire at the module. I want to see the same thing there. Okay. To be clear about this picture, where my cursor is in here, it's 11 volts. Cursor one, pull that over. Cursor one, it's 11.9 volts right there in this area right here, right? So ground side switch circuit fixed high. This would be chapter three material in my, in my book. Fixed high ground side switch circuit. What are your options for faults? and that is not an open in the coil. And that's what we are addressing with that test. Now that we're moving over on the same wire at the module, we wanna make sure that there's no open in between the module and the distributor. If there's an open, that line will be fixed low in the other location, okay? Chapter three material, if you have more questions, follow my chapter three playlists, both here on YouTube and on my website, Scanner Danner Premium. Or feel free to ask your questions here. I'll do my best to answer any of your ground side switched circuit problem type questions. That's what we're dealing with. Same test, different location, coil control. And of course, Looks like my pin is not making contact. Freeze that picture, zoom out. Why is it better since I stuffed that pin in there? It actually is. It's not dropping out as much. Look how much better that is. What's that suggesting? Contact right there at the module on that pin. When it does drop out, listen to how much better it's running. When it does drop out, this addresses the wiring issue right here. That line is still fixed at 12 volts. So it's not an open in between, but right there, the fact that this is now running better. I mean, look at the zoomed out view of this. Much less dropouts. Eh, that's a stretch maybe. I'm gonna wiggle this connection. I pulled this pin out, so we're not really looking at the waveform here. Just listen to the, the vehicle. Maybe. Could be, could be. Usually though with a pin issue we could duplicate that better and I wiggled it and didn't really move it Let's see if any of these are spread apart from someone being in here before and testing things they, they don't look spread apart so it'd be like in between the two parts of metal they don't look spread that kind of makes sense too from a standpoint of like me wiggling the connector and really not having a change and I mean, I thought maybe when I back probed that pin that I had an improvement, but apparently not. Yeah, it's tough to it's tough to call another distributor. And my brother put a module in it already, and it's doing the same thing with the old module to the new one because we 
the module would be suspect too. I just don't have enough evidence yet to say that that's a faulty distributor. I'm not done with my checks. I still got some ground checks to do <clears throat> and some power checks to do. So we'll do that. Let's go ground first, which is the bottom wire. We've addressed the coil control wire, the green. We have the yellow wire is a spout. I'm not worried about him. I believe the power wire is green, uh, red with a green. Let's do both of those together. We'll do the, the ground and the main feed for the module. Make sure we're not dropping those. All right, power and ground and coil control. We'll adjust our scales here in a second. I do still have the alternator unplugged, by the way. Uh, I'm not on the right wire. Blue Trace is uh, module power feed. Green trace is module ground. Pause that, zoom out. I don't, I don't, I don't get it. Tough to call a distributor, but I, I especially when it's new. So um, the ground is fine, it's flat line. And if you look at the blue trace, some of you might not like what you're seeing. Uh, let me pull a cursor in. Under cursor one, look at the voltage levels. So when the coil's not firing, we're talking 11.76 volts. Remember, the alternator's not charging right now. And when the coil fires, we get a drop in voltage from 11.7 down to 10.85. So around a one volt drop with a current flow of yellow trace um, 6.5 amps that's a huge current flow it's normal to have that kind of voltage drop and then the spike that you see at the end that's just where spark occurs so that's not a problem um, at all at all there's nothing wrong with this feed to this ignition module there's nothing wrong with the ground and so I'm like back on the pickup again. There's a, there's a final wire. I think it's the crank circuit wire that I didn't check, but I don't think that has anything to do with it. Danner does have, oh, it's old school diagram. Yeah. Yeah, the red with the light blue is is the start signal that just powers up in the crank. So that start signal, the one you have, so my memory serves me that that was different on some models. Some models that was an ignition diagnostic monitor circuit and other ones it was the start signal. So that's the only one I haven't checked so far. Everything else looks good. Mm -hmm. um, I know. But would you know, remember the, the older ones I thought were black. Right, the, some of the modules were black in color and then others were gray in color and that dictated which one that you, was supposed to be for what car. Oh. I don't know that that's a factor here. Uh, it is something to think about. Um, but I'm ready to call a distributor and I'm like, oh, it's a new distributor. We need to know what this was running like with the old distributor. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna have I to need, call. I need you to make a phone call so I'm not running in circles and chasing yeah, my tail. Okay. Well, put it on the burner for now. I'll call him and try to get some kind of info out of him. Okay. Wherever it was at, they should be able to at least get me a distributor under warranty. Yeah, you know? I hate to be a parts changer, but uh, yeah. <laughs> we're about to be. Uh, let me check his PIP signal one more time. Just want to look at it a little bit closer. And if, if it was me, and I didn't already know that Danner put a module in this, I'd be, I'd be telling him to put a module in it. 
Although, you know, I'm seeing some variations. I'm really focused on the clipping mechanism here. And they just don't look like, although that one right there does. Yeah. Yep, putting a pickup in this. I feel better about it now. That's what we want to look for. It's so subtle. I've done so many of these over the years and gotten my ass kicked by them. We're not losing the signal, but unequal length right here. You, you can see it. So, so you can almost see too, like the fatter and skinnier dwell times of the coil. And you know, granted the RPM's changing too, but you see how narrow that one is? See how, see how small that clipping is? You see how that one is? How that one is? Those guys should all be even. And the fact that they're not is telling me that this, this pickup is causing our issue. It's getting bad signals. Normally though, you unplug the spout and uh, that corrects that problem. Just look at this a little further, see if I see another area where it's evident. Kind of look at this grouping here right before it dies is really where I'm interested in. Yeah, look, look when, it, when it comes back, like the curvature in that, that shouldn't be there. That shouldn't be there. And neither should, unless that's my sink. Is that my sink signal? But the unequal length here to here is a problem. There to there. See how long that one is in that area? See how short that is there? That I believe is my sink notch, which that shouldn't have that there. They should be even, uniform. Yeah, it's right after, that's what I remember too. Right after the sink, and you get this little short little guy. And then it comes back, starts firing. That should be fire. It should be firing in there. That's my sink notch. Shouldn't be clipping that guy. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, back to one. And right there, we're clipping that sink notch. And that shouldn't be doing that. That shouldn't be doing that on, on the sink. And then after that, it starts to, to fire again, briefly. That's, that's the sink, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then we're clipping the sink again. It shouldn't be. And that was this one. Count that as one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, back to one. And I just don't like the curvature of it. It's like, I don't like that there's fatter ones here, skinnier ones here as far as dwell time. I don't like, so I was looking at the yellow trace there. I, I don't like the way that the curvature of these are. I don't like the long one here and the shorter one here and the higher one here, the curvature of these I don't like. Uh, I'm making the call. Okay, we're putting a pickup in this and uh, we'll see what happens. I do wanna get a history from Danner on this, but in the meantime, we're gonna pause here and uh, we'll pick you guys back up here in a minute. We're gonna go work on another car while we're waiting for the customer to get back to us and figure out what Danner's gonna do. But I'm calling, the, I'm calling the distributor on this. There is nothing else that would be making this coil drop out from what we're seeing other than that. I mean, you could have a connection problem like up inside, but again, that's gonna be handled with a distributor replacement or pickup replacement in this distributor. So come back to you here shortly. Perfect. What'd you do? Son of a Okay, okay. As usual, when it comes to walking away from a particular call and going to another car, I'm still processing. Sometimes it just takes me a little bit longer to process. And I said to Caleb, I said, did I unplug the spout and have the alternator unplugged? 
and we're pretty sure we did not. And any time I've seen this issue with a pickup, when you unplug the spout, it gets rid of the problem. Um, this one did not. Unplug the spout, problem's still there. But with the alternator and spout unplugged, I just started it and there's no misfire. So I wanna hook back up because I believe that this now gives me 100% confidence in the call that I said we have a faulty pickup. Remember, it's not just a hall effect. It goes into some electronic circuitry in the module too that we can't see every time I have seen this. When you unplug the spout connector, it restores operation of normal coil firing events. And that didn't happen here because I believe we have two problems, alternator and the pickup. So I'm just going back to my spout wire, top wire. Alternator's unplugged, spout's unplugged. And let's run this. I believe the alternator ripple is a factor in here too. The tack is much more steady. Look at this. Awesome. Awesome. Pause, zoom. No drops. Nope. There's still one in there. It's better. Just like I expected night and day different on how it's running. But I do want to see when this drops out. Sink notch. Just so strange for it to just stop firing. It's like that signal's never making it to the to the module. It has to be. I'm not losing it. It's so much better. So now spout plug back in. Alternator plug back in. That thing's noisy. <laughs> you hear it? Alternator's a factor too. Alternator plugged in, spout unplugged. All kind of drops. We're looking live now. Maybe it'd help to be looking at this at a higher time base. Not bad now. It, it's like changed on me. Alternator unplugged. How nice and clean the pattern is. Plug the spout back in. Immediate dropouts start happening with the spout in. The little one that's going across the screen is scope uh, trace. The longer time base will do that. The drops would be the bigger gaps that you'll see on occasion. Right there. Right there, right there. Right there. So drops, and now, now we'll plug the alternate. That's pretty bad on that one. Plugging the alternator back in. Severe drops in that now. Alternator, absolutely a factor in here. That diode pattern's interfering. 
Now we'll go back to alternator unplugged. Still getting drops, not quite as severe, but drops are there. I mean, maybe we could say alternator's not a factor. It is, we have a diode problem, but is that causing these dropouts? Now, we'll, it's real bad right now, spout unplugged. I was just gonna say that's what we want to see and then it starts misfiring like just as bad with the spout unplugged and the alternator unplugged and I'm not losing these signals I'm no more sore anymore. <laughs> I was like, now I'm 100% sore because I unplugged that and it's not missing anymore. I mean, I'll be honest with you. I, I, this looks more like a faulty module than a faulty pickup to me. But Danner just put one in it. But they don't make these anymore, so who's making them? That spout plug back in and it's not really any worse. It's both. <laughs> it's the pickup and the module. That's not right. Having that one and that one, that doesn't look good. See how short that clipping is there? That's the sink and then there's almost no clip there. Uh, what, what I hesitate about is when, when you have this problem, typically with the, with the spout out of the picture, it's it's better. Maybe it is. Waveform wise, it's really not. I'm unsure. And how 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 long do I run in circles right here when our problem is right here? Is it the module? Is it the pickup? I don't like the old module was doing the same thing. That's probably the third one. I'm gonna chalk this up to sh parts. All right, we're done for right now. I'm sticking with my original call. I'm gonna talk to Danner about the potential of a module failure here too. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, I'm frustrated now that I can't be 100% sure for you guys. This is I'm not missing anything external. Uh, this could be a faulty module too from what I'm seeing because I'm dropping controls. I don't like the spout and pip signals. You know, I never did look at the spout signal, but it doesn't matter. When I unplug the connector, it still acts the same way. So, all right, I'm done for right now. I need to think about it. Look, I'm not sure. I know our problem's at the distributor. Mm -hmm. And I almost feel like it's possibly a bad module. And that doesn't make any sense because they've probably had a module put in before, and then you put one in, and now I'm saying the same thing. Mm -hmm. The potential is there that that driver just simply is not functioning like it should be on that module. And they don't make those parts anymore. So they're all aftermarket outsourced. Mm -hmm. It's not like you're getting a module from Ford anymore for those. Yeah. It's an outsourced Chinese freaking made. That's a factor here. Mm -hmm. But it I, was exactly the same yes, with the other module. Exactly so, the yeah, same. Exactly. So I my leanings are for the, for the pickup in the distributor. I don't like that it runs oh i need to put i need to put oil in that one when it makes that noise normally when you unplug the spout when you see that pickups fail then the misfire goes away mm -hmm. um but what i didn't do is like rev it and see like if it was better at higher rpms whatever um 
I don't like that I can't make the misfire go away even with the spout unplugged. It's definitely worse with the alternator plugged in. There's some di a diode issue with the alternator, but I, that's that's secondary. Yeah. That's aggravating the situation. Yeah. Um, I'm saying distributor pickup still. So that's the call. Yeah. Um, I do want to know history on the call. Yeah, I'll have to call him and see you know and see if if it was exactly the same. And you're right. For your module swap, it was exactly the same symptoms. No change whatsoever. What we're hearing and seeing now is exactly what the old module did. Yeah. If there was like a that three makes or me four feel better on that variable. It was exactly the same. Okay. Okay. So. Yeah. Call it, man. Pick up. No, I'll call him. That's the weird fine. part is like why it would drop those signals out when they look good. Even with the spout unplugged, they look perfect. Like just normal square waves, and why would it be dropping out? It shouldn't be. Yeah. But there's internal circuitry. That's why I was thinking module. Fuck out. I just can't prove it. I, I can't yeah, I don't yeah. have any more evidence, but we're not missing anything. There's nothing else external. The spout's not a factor. I didn't check the spout wire, but when you unplug the spout connector, it's out of the, it's out of the picture. Yeah. The computer's out of the picture and it's still doing it. Yeah. Pick up. Okay. All right, no, I'll call him. I'll call him later. And I checked the ground, ex like that ground wire. Yeah, no, I, 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 I'm running in circles and I'm- Okay, no, that's fine. And there is a warning on like changing the module to make sure you wiggle it and pull it down and not unbolt it and try to pull it out or you'll damage the pickup. So we don't know that they put a distributor in and then used the old module and then yeah. someone decided to change it and pulled on it and mm. then maybe the pins inside. But how could you prove that? Yeah. You can't unless yeah. you unless you were to try to run three jumper wires off of the distributor over and relocate the module just right to so you could actually test Right. The actual pickup coil. Yeah. So you See, could do it. Ah, <laughs> if we're doing it, but it's a that's, that's fine. Geek four no. Mustang. Okay, yeah. okay. Oh, no. Care. If I get a chance, <laughs> if I get a chance, maybe I'll do that. Well, I have adapters. To... We could totally do that. But the problem with that is you'd have to ground the module too. You, the module needs a good base ground. Okay. For heat. It'll run without it because it's got an external ground, but yeah. heat wise. <laughs> <laughs> but here's the thing. If yeah, I mean, that's the if only I'm thing. calling a pickup, I mean, we would see it there. We'd see it there. That and would, yeah, that would be my only, that's the only way to prove you're it. You're right. And that would, to, that would salvage what we're dealing with here because I'm telling them on, I want to be a parts changer. I want, well, I mean, then. Let's be clear about something here. Some of you are like, yeah, <laughs> there's your thumbnail, Caleb. <laughs> <laughs> Some of you are like, why are you, just make the call ready. It's flat rate and we got jobs to do. That's not what I'm doing. I'm trying, I want to prove it. Yeah, this he's the teacher here. That's why he can come in and turn a one hour diagnostic into a five hour film process and it works. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but like to prove it is what we're trying to do. Prove it yes. on camera. Yes. You know, we have enough evidence to make the call on the distributor and you probably could have made that call just common knowledge and you already threw a module on it and that didn't work so what's the next yeah. thing it spouts unplugged and i do want powers it. and grounds are good yeah. change the distributor yeah i just wanted to i like your idea that's a good idea and i have the adapters to do it so we're not doing three today that's the, well i'll do one other one other than this okay, if i'm doing whatever that. damn it sorry this is my frustrated face I don't want to work on this car anymore. There's very few out there like it. Nobody cares. I wanna be clear about something. What I'm doing here, absolutely, positively, 100% overkill for this old school car, okay? Um, this is being done um, in light of video, education, and proving. Uh, a concept and proving uh, the fault to you guys and, and that's my motivation here so this module as we learned on our last eek 4 truck with that was remotely m mounted um, doesn't need to be grounded for a ground but does for heat dissipation so you know we don't want to run it very long without having it resting on something metal to keep it 
cool. Those will just have to hang there and I'll grab each one individually. All right, we'll go back to coil control with this. And then. Ground. And this will go to each one individually. It's going to look a little different than what we saw. What is happening? I shouldn't need a ground. Did I mix up my signals? I might have. This should be the first one. No, it should be good. Maybe this one does need a ground. I don't think, I didn't think it did. I don't think this module needs a ground. We just ran one without one recently. Why? I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Something. I'm like 99% sure that this module does not need to be grounded. But that's like my only other variable. Maybe the distributor, ah, uh, that would be why. It grounds, so the distributor pickup would ground through the module, which grounds externally. And I've taken the ground away. So it's not the module that needs a ground. It's the distributor that needs a ground. That should, that should fix it. That should fix it. So the pickup in the, in the distributor needed that. What am I doing wrong? Can I not do this test for some reason? Like, does the distributor module? Okay, let's not go to ground then. Let's go to this. I don't know that that, I don't know that that matters. There's internal circuitry that I'm unaware of on this pickup. Guess that was it. Dropouts. This is our three pickup wires. Just like the spout. Unplug the spout. Danner, can you unplug this? What am I doing? Unplug the spout for me. Just be careful with the wiring over here. And I'm unplugging the alternator just for clean, cleanness of the signal. Why is it not dropping on now? Because it's it's been better with the spout and the and the alternator unplugged. I'm just looking at the three wires. That's your ground. That would be the feed to it, which doesn't look good. Yeah, that's weird how it's feeling. You see the drops like that? That's the power feed for the for the hall effect. And that shouldn't really be doing that, but and then that's the hall effect signal itself. And I'm not. It's not dropping anymore. So there's your. There it was right there. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, I, but we're not losing the pickup. No. Which makes you think the module's screwed up, right? Yes. <laughs> if I'm in the field, I'm working on this for five minutes and I'm putting a freaking whole distributor back in the day. Yeah. Distributor with a module. Done. Well, that's what they did. Yeah, and done. Then, then yeah, the same except, thing. Except they weren't Chinese parts back then. Yeah, see now it's... 
I saw it. Yeah, it's dropping. I can see it dropping. The yellow one. That's your your. Cool, that's the current ramp. Yeah. That's yeah. your current ramp. Yeah. But we're not seeing. And the green one is what? The the the, 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 whole, the whole effect signal directly, not directly. not processed like out here. Yeah, directly to the mod to the module. So what can cause that then? Bad mods or a bad pickup. <laughs> but the pickup's not the showing. The thing we've known for the past yeah. like hour. Yeah. I feel like this is a bad module. Like, I should be seeing something in there. The signal's there. Yeah. How do you call a pickup when I'm to, we can no longer say, well, it's processed and it's external, because that's what happens. That signal comes into the module goes through a bunch of circuitry then comes out but now we're looking directly at it i want you to give me a different module give me a freaking used module out of something i, I dude i looked come on it's module or pickup <laughs> but the pickup signal looks i good. know it looks good i'm with you so it looks like a module so get me a module we were just talking about what we're doing with this stupid mustang yeah. I was complaining to Caleb. It's like, that's a week of editing right there. Yeah, it's like, yeah, it's yeah. not even worth it. Yeah. But the, the other thing, and maybe they would want to know too, is it wouldn't run unless I grounded the module to the housing. And the reason for that would be the, the ground for the um, pickup. It's got to be connected to the module and the module grounds that externally. So yeah. when I grounded the housing by itself, it didn't like that. So whatever, for whatever reason, that's a factor. So you could have like bad connection between module and housing. It physically has to. It physically, the module housing for is, that design is the ground. needs to, is the ground for the Hall effect signal. So you think uh, not for the not for the coil side. No, the coil it's externally grounded. Yeah. So that module has an external ground just like the remotely mounted one had yeah. and it ran without being bolted yeah. up. That's the way that is too. But the pickup in the distributor needed to be grounded to the module, not to the battery for whatever reason. It wouldn't run when I grounded the housing of the distributor. Yeah, uh, that ground, that connection between module and distributor housing had to be there. Is oh, so that you had the ground, you had the ground, the module physically to the distributor. Yes. And yeah. you couldn't ground the distributor. Uh -uh. But what if you grounded the module? I tried to that too. What? Yeah. That doesn't make sense, does it? Because all the wires are going to the module. Well, if the module's a... externally grounded, then none of that should matter. We could we have a ground issue? It's the only other variable. If I had a ground issue, I would have seen it on my ground wire on that module. Because it's an external ground, you know? I would have seen elevated voltages on that ground. So you said it wouldn't run unless you jump unless I the jumper from the case of the module, module to, to, the, to the case of the distributor. Yeah. That doesn't make any sense. Yeah. I'd have to think about that one. That doesn't make sense. Now that I'm talking about it, that I had to ground the, I had to ground the housing of the module to the housing of the distributor. The module has an external ground. And I got all three pickup wires connected. I'm not going back to that car. We're putting a module in it. And if I have another module with the same problem, then we'll revisit this question. I'm done chasing my tail. <laughs> Last comment. I'm not going back and checking that shit. Get me a module. Talk to the customer. Okay. And if it doesn't fix it, then we'll revisit this. Okay. What we don't know is the diagrams aren't going to show us the internal parts of that. And I don't know if the third wire is some type of shield and it does need to be grounded on the housing, which then does ground through the module. I don't know. That's true. Yeah. I don't care. No, I don't yeah. inside. I don't know what's in there. Yeah. You know, and so it won't run unless I do that. So um, it's a it, it's clean. It's a new module. Yeah. There's no reason it, that should be an issue. And, yeah. I, and even it, when you do ground it, it's still it's losing still the it. same. And it's, and it's still like the you, same yeah. way. Yeah. So uh, an unanswered question, maybe don't care. Talk to the customer. Get me a module. Hey, it's uh, it's my theme song.
<laughs> Somebody just commented about that the other day, like worst song in the world. Somebody else commented uh, the other day that um, the guy's like, you know what you're doing, I appreciate that, but you're a thousand percent annoying all the time. I'm unsubscribing. <laughs> nice. And then, then I posted it on Facebook and I blocked the guy's name out, it's fine. And somebody's like, you're, you know, you're really, you're annoying him in 10 different dimensions. <laughs>